you know, I have a friend, and you probably also have a friend, a friend who does not know or does not want to know anything about hosting. And they are the friends who actually ask you, like, hey, can you set up my website? Can you set up my hosting? And that's really important because I, I realized that when my friend was asking that, that a lot of people actually have this problem that they don't even know how to get started. So my friend, he actually owns a small one-man snowmobile shop uh, in the northern Lapland. And he knows every bit and piece about snowmobiles, but I have no, nothing, no idea about that. So I wanted to help him because he wanted to attract more customers. And this was already back in 2016. So I actually, I... I called him and I tried to explain to him, like, how do you buy a web hotel? And I was trying to guide him and it was completely impossible. I actually did go to this house and I helped him uh, to buy it step by step. And he was there like looking at me like I'm a magician. <laughs> yeah, but then uh, I, I realized like how people are supposed to know how to install WordPress and how they are supposed to know wh where their database host is located even in the WordPress installer. Yeah, I started actually doing WordPress sites already back in like 2010. So it's been a long time since that. Um, I have always loved doing hosting stuff, uh, mostly about servers. And, uh, you know, I, I did have my seven uh, physical servers at my garage, warming it up at night, mining bitcoins. And I was trying to learn how to cluster them together. And yeah, my name is Jonas Vanhapi and I am the founder behind VP Cloud. Uh, some of you might know that. And I will tell you the story uh, how VP Cloud evolved from shared hosting to VPS hosting to cloud hosting. Yeah. So uh, it can be quite difficult actually to choose what kind of hosting you want for your WordPress site, uh, because there is so many different options and you might not even know what's the difference. And my friend definitely does not know what's the difference between these. So I'm going to talk through the shared hosting, VPS hosting and cloud hosting, and starting with the shared hosting, because that's the most easy way in actually. So I back in 2016, I wanted to have my friend's website as well as his friend's websites um, hosted by me because they wouldn't know how to actually maintain the website. So I was doing all bits and pieces for them. And shared hosting, it's actually, um, it's, it's nice. Uh, you can host a lot of small sites in it, uh, static sites. But at some point, you have to really make decisions about how you want the customer experience to be. Do you want to avoid having all resource intensive sites? Do you want to block sites that actually have too many visitors? Or do you want to block even access like to basic tooling like VP Cli or SSH, or even prevent them using like uh, image processing tools? Because all of these cost load on that one server where you have like hundreds of sites. And I did realize at some point that I can't customize it enough. I was using, you know, um, commercially available tools to uh, host it and trying to customize it, but then realized that, yeah, it's not, it's not going to work because I started getting bigger sites that uh, are more resource consumptive and getting much, much more visitors. Yeah. So then um, some people think, okay, so for resource heavy sites, let's use VPS hosting. So it actually removes the restrictions that you have in shared hosting because you can actually do anything in it. And that's the really cool thing about it. You can have um, the software you want, you can have all the custom tooling that you want, you can have all the developer tools that you need. And I have an example case. We had a clothing brand customer and they didn't have any developer involved in creating their site. They had a WooCommerce store with around 50 plugins and they were very popular. They had around 50,000 people following them on Facebook and they would do regularly this kind of flash sales where 50,000 people trying to get on their website at the same time. And it was a huge mess because 
their site was not optimized at all. Uh, the caching wouldn't work at their site. And it was just really difficult at that time. So we did do all kinds of things on our side, on the hosting side, to actually make it better. But we realized that we actually need something else because the only thing we can do is to only increase the resources that cost a lot more to them, even though they are not using them, except for these flash sales. So then we go with cloud hosting. And that's really the next step because in shared hosting, you have all these uh, limitations and, and you are using shared resources. But then in the VPS hosting, you do have the dedicated resources, you have the customability in it, but it's not scaling easily. So you, you can scale only until a certain point. But with cloud hosting, you can actually define a single website, its own resources, and you can allow it to scale without any need um, to be manually adding servers in the background. So it auto-scales. So as an example, uh, we did move this previous customer there. They didn't have any issues because when they didn't have any customers, the, their site would have one container not using resources at all. But when they would have the flash sales, then they would get like 20, 30 servers behind there, just to handle all that load. So, the big question is like, which one you should use? I would say that share hosting is nice, it's cheap, and you can use it for small sites, especially if they are mostly static sites. But then, uh, if you really need something very specific that uh, shared hosting cannot provide, then you should go with VPS, but only if you are a system administrator and you know your way around. And cloud hosting, it works pretty well for at least uh, WooCommerce stores, uh, membership sites, because it scales. It's, it's fixed for all those sites that have need for um, like uh, resource usage that's changing a lot over time. And I want to just bring out the difference between the managed and self-managed hosting, because that's also a big question, because I see a lot of hosting providers say that, yes, here is our managed WordPress hosting, but what is managed WordPress hosting? Um, some hosts, say that they are managed because it uh, uh, creates the site when you order it, but they don't actually do anything else about it. But in my opinion, uh, a managed hosting, it's something of a combination of hosting and the agency. So basically taking care of the site from the moment it's ordered so that it's working, it's up and running, it's optimized straight from the start. And so there is someone who is actually checking that the site works and it's updated against the security vulnerabilities. And most importantly for the end users, they really need support. Uh, I have um, experienced that quite a lot when people are not sure about how they should proceed, what, should, what they should do in certain cases when they're having issues with WordPress. So it's really important that at least in the managed hosting sector, there is a WordPress support available for these people. Because to make WordPress more accessible to less technical users, we as a hosting providers must help them on every step of the way, making it simpler. Because when our clients succeed in their business, we will also succeed. Um, feel free to um, connect with me in LinkedIn and uh, let me know uh, what did you think about my speech. Thank you.